Hi everybody, today I'm gonna to be showing you how to replace a switch. So the first step in getting started is to make sure that the master power is off. That way when we open it up, you're not in for a shocking surprise. There's a couple- Okay, sorry, wrong video. In this video, we're actually gonna be talking about the new DaVinci Resolve switch note that was released in 19.1. At face value, it looks very similar to the Dissolve or Emerge note, but there are some key differences and a really, really cool feature that sets it apart. Basically, it lets you plug in a bunch of different inputs into one node, and then it'll only output the one that you have selected. So let's switch into DaVinci Resolve and take a look. When you add in the node, you'll notice that one of the inputs is bigger, and this is just like how it works in the multi-merge node. It symbolizes which input is currently active. At first, it only has two inputs, so let's add in some background nodes and connect them up. Once we have nodes connected, in the inspector, you can see we can switch between two inputs, input 0 and input 1. That will also change which one of those triangles is bigger, so it symbolizes which input is currently being used. Right now, this is just like the dissolve node being set to 0 or 1. But under the config tab, we can add in even more inputs just by dragging the slide so let's say we set it to three and then we can label these inputs right down here below so let's do red white and blue after plugging in the third input we can come back to the controls tab we see each one of those colors labeled and by clicking on it it'll output that background node instead of the others already this is really cool but it only gets better just to give you an example to create a switch feature in the previous versions this is what the no graph would look like and this is only for 20 inputs it gets way more confusing when you add in even more and each one of these dissolve nodes has a more complicated expression now it only looks like this and in the inspector we have a drop down menu that lets us select which in this case logo that we want to see there there's no expressions, you just have to go through and label those, really, really easy to set up. So if you want to have 100, 200, 300 logos in one template, you can easily do that now. Kind of. There is a soft limitation to this tool, capping it out at 64 inputs. To get there, you have to type in a number, so let's say I do 65, and that will cap it to be 64. I cannot go above that. But if you know Fusion, we can get around this pretty easy. The code is more what you call guidelines than actual rules. If you right click on the node, we can go down to edit controls, and under the ID, we can select the number of inputs controlled. So this lets us edit everything about this number of inputs slider. First, we want to hit config, so that way it stays on this main page. Page, and then over here we can change the range so down here allowed is 1 to 64 we could set this to be 1 to 200 and then hit OK. And now if we type in 200 into the slider, it will let us add in 200 inputs. It's going to add in all of those. You can see the switch node is getting pretty crazy. 5,000. DaVinci Resolve is frozen. I don't think 5,000 was a good idea. Yep, it was not a good idea. So keep in mind the limit is probably there for a reason, and going too far beyond 64 could result in some big performance issues and some weird UI artifacts. I can't even tell which input is which here. Let's say I use the all click trick and oh my gosh, it's just all inputs, the whole screen. All right, let's do input 1430. So if I go to switch, controls, input 1430 it works you can use as many inputs as you want while we're on the topic of edit controls let's talk about formatting the switch controls when you first add in the tool or if you just have a couple inputs it's going to show you all of them laid out like so in most cases i don't like that i would prefer if it started in the drop down mode which it eventually switches to when there's too many inputs if that's something you want to change it's actually extremely easy if you right click on it go to edit controls we can go to the id select source and now we just have to switch this to be a combo control and again switch it so it stays on the controls page now right from the start it's going to have that drop down menu a simple fix for a simple problem something so cool about this node is that it works in pass through mode if you've watched my videos before you've probably heard me talk about how transform nodes can work together as an example if you have a transform node that scales something all the way down till it's barely barely visible you can add in another transform node after that and scale it way back up until it's at the original size in this process we haven't lost any information this transform node did not lose any pixels like you might expect it to but if we add another node in between here like a color corrector it'll break that connection and you can see we're going to get the expected result after destroying that much information the reason it works without the color corrector is those transform nodes can pass information along to each other this is also the case for motion blur transform nodes have a really unique quality that only the last transform node needs to have motion blur turned on and if i had something animated in this first transform node it would still render motion blur but again if i had an effect in there like a color corrector it would break that connection so i would need to turn motion blur on in both of these nodes. 
The one exception for that up until today is the merge node. If I have that here, it's not going to break that resolution connection or that motion blur connection. Adding in a dissolve node, if you wanted to make that switch thing in previous versions, would break this connection. So you'd have to get creative if you wanted to use that. Now with this new switch node, if we add that in, as you can see, it doesn't break. It'll still work just fine. This might seem like a really small thing, but it's actually a great feature. And since this node doesn't modify the image at all, it works in any node system. If I connect a shape node into the switch, you can see it turns purple and it's going to render that shape no problem. Same thing with a 3D shape, I can connect that in there and it will render it just fine. Particle nodes you can connect into it, but for some reason it either crashes DaVinci Resolve or the node just turns red and doesn't work. So maybe that's something that they add in the future. And with USD nodes, it also doesn't work with this node because there is a dedicated U switch node. It works exactly the same, except it has this new export tab, which I think has to do with the new U export node that was just added. I haven't looked into that much, so I don't exactly know how that works, but I'd imagine those two are connected. Regardless, if you want to use the switch tool, you can. And I really mean that because it has a modifier version as well that lets you add it to controls. This is really crazy. If you right click on a control, there's either going to be a switch modifier on this first page or underneath the modify with menu. So if I add the switch modifier to a control, the modifiers tab will light up and I have a lot of the same controls. Since we're not working with different images, we don't have the input triangles. Instead, we have input text boxes or if you're working on a size control, it'll be a slider. So we can put anything inside of these. So the first one could be subscribe and the second one could be subscribed. Now with these two buttons, we can easily switch between them. And under the config tab, we can add in more inputs and even label them. If you've ever tried to animate a text box or really any control that you wanted to instantly change to another number, you know it can be annoying. Once you get it done, if you ever need to go back and edit it, you need to make sure you're on the right frame, otherwise the whole thing will be messed up. And that's where this comes in. All that you need to do with this control is animate this source value. So if I add a keyframe on frame 38 and then come to frame 60 and switch it to be the second value, once it gets to frame 60, it's going to switch to the second value. And even if I have 100 inputs, I can keyframe any one of those to have it jump around. And this animation automatically uses a step and curve. So that means it will not update until it gets to that second keyframe and then it'll switch. If you jump between multiple values, say go from red to blue, and you animate it over multiple frames, it'll stay on red and then switch to blue. It won't switch to white in the middle, it'll just go between those two that you set. I really like how they've set this up. Now in the spline editor, if you have that selected, you could select this and then do shift L on your keyboard to set it to be a linear curve. And that way it'll go from red to white to blue. So you can have it cycle between all of those different inputs. Adding easing isn't really gonna do anything. And if you're working with number values, it's gonna go from zero to one to two, it's not gonna automatically fill in those gaps in between, even if you add in a linear curve. This tool also works really well with expressions, and to show you, I'm going to make a basic number counter that uses different symbols. Let's right click on the modifier, go to edit controls, and then we're going to make a new one just called count. We'll set this to be on the controls page, we're going to have it be an integer value going from 0 to 100. We also want this to be a slider control and hit OK. That's going to add in this brand new control that we can use. On the first value, I'm going to right click and do expression. And I want to do in quotes, I'm going to do a dollar sign and then followed by two periods. And then I'm going to write count. This is going to add that dollar sign to whatever we set this value to. Pretty easy to make a simple number counter. On the second one, I'm going to add an expression and then I'm going to do count two periods, and then I'm going to add in a percent sign. And now when I switch to the second value, it's going to have that percent sign with the same value. So this is this is really cool. Obviously, this is a pretty basic example, but you can take this way further, and I'm very excited to see the stuff that people make. If you want to learn all about expressions, I have a full page on my website with a bunch of expressions, descriptions on what they do, and a 45-minute training teaching you how they work. All of this for free. That's linked down below. On my website, I also provide really high-quality templates for DaVinci Resolve that will save you hours when editing. I use those templates to edit this video without using a single keyframe and they also save me an hour or two as well. So let me know what you think about this new switch node in the switch modifier down below. I think this is a really good addition that will save people a ton of time and unlock more possibilities in the program. If you have any comments or questions, please let me know.